Welcome, Welcome to, to Cash, Cash Cuties, Cuties, a super personal finance podcast where we look at our friends' credit card statements and judge their spending habits with love. I'm your host, Fumi Abe. And I'm Stuffy Bake. So announcements, if you're listening on your Apple Pod app, please leave a review. Please hit follow on Spotify and sub to our YouTube channel. All the links are available in the episode description. Yay. Guys, I just found out that if you get a, a thousand subscribers on YouTube, you can monetize it. So Ooh. we're at like 600 something we have way more listeners than that please go to youtube.com yeah type in cash cuties podcast please hit subscribe it's gonna help us amazing um let's move on to our dono daddies dude yes um people have been just giving us money which yeah. is really nice we love and it we don't really know what to do so we've been just giving you guys shout outs and here's the thing here's where the money is going okay you're not just you're not just funding our lives okay we got expenses okay these microphones Okay, the SM58, that was $120. This is noise. That's a noise <laughs> mic. That's a noise mic, okay? And this fucking H6, that was like 300 bucks. Okay, oh, that's these what, things are yeah. expensive. That's what you're paying for. It's not just going to like Steffi's, I don't know. I don't even know what it is that you do with your money. Like you know what I'm saying? Like my croissants. It's not oh, going to croissants. Not not just croissants. But if it was, but if it was like... You need croissants in your life. That's <laughs> for sure. Let me have two croissants instead of just one. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So these are the people who gave us money this week. Uh, first up, we have Andre. He gave us nine eighty seven. He said, uh, "Could you plug Musicians Club of San Diego in the pod? We're also struggling financially. <laughs> Thanks." So <laughs> <laughs> wait, she thought that it was. By the way, she just looked at me and went nine eighty seven. It's nine dollars. Nine dollars and eighty seven. Oh, <laughs> I Bruh. love that her eyes, she's like, I'm on the wrong podcast. <laughs> well, hold on. But like, it was weird because it's like, why 87? Like you couldn't do 13 more cents, my guy? I don't know because oh. it's, it's not like, because okay, are they you should, charged? So, so on Patreon, it's always a weird number because Patreon takes a percentage, but on Venmo, it's just straight up. So I don't, I don't know if know. this is a joke or like if this means something, 987. Well, they sent it to both of us individually, 987. I think it's joke. It's 987. Like it What's the joke? It's that cr it's chronologically descending. descending. They're giving yeah. us. Ha -ha. Yeah. <laughs> Andre's it's hilarious. Okay, look, oh, it says we're struggling financially, though. So, so guys, if you're in San Diego, be sure go. to check out Musicians Club of San Diego. Yeah. Uh, next, we have KO. Uh, KO sent me finally the six ninety nine dollars that they sent to you last time. I remember I complained. <laughs> you like, shamed them on the podcast. I, uh, yeah. So, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. And they said, love you on Couch Cuties and fun with them. That's so, great. thank you. This next guy, this is fucking crazy. This is three weeks in a row. Whoa. Fucking Scott. We gave love. each of us fifty dollars. What is he, my fucking grandma? Like this oh, is crazy on I Lunar New Year. That's this nice. Fifty dollars. So nice. I happen to be a vintage guitar dealer. Check out my stuff at Queens Vintage Guitar. Ooh. This is turning into a advertisement sponsorship. sponsorship. Wait a second. This is People sponsor. are paying you to sponsor their stuff. <laughs> but you know what? Fifty bucks. That's Do not it. Bad. Good with it. That's not bad. Thank you so much, Scott. Scott, everybody, yeah, check out Queen check Queens out. Vintage Guitars on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, next, we have. Uh, Robbie Roy paid me $15 and then it said $4.99 to Fumi because he has great hair. The rest for me because I'm a waifu. So thank you. <laughs> You're a waifu? Yeah, I was like so honored. I think I messaged him. I was like, wow, uh, Robbie. Next we have Juliana ZW, five bucks. She mm -hmm. said, don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing great. I'm loving the pod. My Wednesday Aww. lunch highlight. Oh, that's really that's sweet. Nice. That's really sweet. And that's last sweet. but not least, we have Fawn G, $5. She just put dono mommy. I like that. Should we change it from Dono Daddies to Dono Parents? <laughs> I don't know. You gendered that, it. You gendered I, it, dude. I don't know. But here's the thing is like a mommy or a daddy can be any gender. That's uh, true. That's true. You know that's what I mean? True. But does it have, do we have to spell it like M-I-M-M-A-M-I -M 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 -I for that to be mommy. activated? Or M-O-M-M-Y -M -M is also cultural. gender. It's also gender neutral. That's true. Okay. That's true. <laughs> dono Parents. I like Dono Daddies. I think Dono, dono Parents is like... I don't know. It's lame. It sounds like a... Lame. Like a Toy store for kids. <laughs> 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 like dodo parents. Dodo parents. <laughs> um, anyways, Steffi, how are you doing financially? Well, um, I did buy an ice machine that I'm absolutely enthralled by. It's $250 on Amazon. And I used to live in a place where there used to be an ice machine in the refrigerator. It's literally like amazing it's like gold mm -hmm. and I, this new place didn't have it because it's an old place but i bought it for 250 and it's like my favorite little machine i like do you connect it to the sink or something so there's always wa no like water. that would be amazing i think they do have those but that's way more expensive mine is just like it literally looks like an air fryer okay and so you have to put water into it and then um it'll take like it takes about like two hours to make ice cube, beautiful <gasps> ice cubes. And then I take those and I put in the refrigerator or the freezer and then I'll make another batch. Wait. That's lit. Can I ask you something? What does <laughs> do ice have... mean to your life? Is it like that? It's just... You I an like, ice gal? I like putting the heat really high on and then I get really like 
hot. Yeah. And so, yes, the ice makes it fucking, I don't oh, know, it feels it luxurious in everything I it put. It does. Doesn't it? Do it you an ice scale? I have like a water dispenser thing. Mm. Like what is, what like those big water jugs? Like, oh, like that like right there? Like office. Yeah, like that. Yeah. But I have one that like comes out hot and cold. Ooh. Like an office Like an one. office one. Yeah. Whoa. It was only like 120 forever. And then I pay like, <laughs> $20 a month to get like the water delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just don't trust LA buildings. They're so mm. old. And my mom, my mom's like best friend got like lead poisoning and I got really paranoid once. And so then I just like invested in like that the shit. The water thing. Yeah. Dude, I just learned about this. A comedian, shout out to Craig Conan. He told me that LA water is like recycled toilet water or something. Wait, all all, all water is recycled not. toilet water. Okay, but he was saying, he Wait, was like- what are you guys talking about right now? I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about sink water from LA. Yeah. We don't drink it. But I didn't know that. I drank it for a whole year. And then he was like, you shouldn't do that because he was like, don't drink water from a city where it's like famous that they don't have water. Like Vegas, LA. Yeah. He was like, don't drink the city. It's water. not, it is technically like a very clean, it's fine to drink. But like my, the reason I think that it's bad is because the buildings, like this fucking building. Yeah. Like oh, the no. pipes. Oh, the pipes are all the shit. Oh. Yeah. And so I also have a water um, filter on my shower. Whoa, dude! I just got that. It helps just your hair so much. It changes the hair game. Like yeah. I was going bald the first year that I moved <laughs> yeah, to LA. Yeah. The I'm not even kidding. Yeah, because of the chlorine in the mm. water. I didn't even fucking think of. I have been it's losing amazing. a lot of hair. There's been a lot of hair on my fucking pillow. And if you shower in the same spot, it's like that's the bald spot. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to lose my hair. <laughs> so tell us, how about you? How are you doing financially? Dude, not good because, okay, you know how I'm like full-time comic now, so I'm very sensitive with how, how I get paid at shows and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is a weird thing. I got banned at a, I can't call it a comedy club because it's not a comedy club, but <gasps> something weird happened and I'd love to hear your take on it. I think I already you know, know which it. one. Was it in New York? No, no, no. This oh. is in LA. Oh, shit. So, okay, okay. There's many. There, I'm not going to name names because, honestly, he was really nice to me. Name until, the name, but just bleep it in the edit. <laughs> I, I don't want to edit it. <laughs> I'll tell fun. you after. There's this like comedy group that operates out of, I guess it's Huntington Beach, right? And basically, they're like one of the first people to like reach out to me when I first moved here and gave me a lot of stage time. They used to pay like 50 bucks, 100 bucks per show. I know it's a bit of a drive, but they give you like 20 minutes. It's a cool opportunity for me to do a show for people who aren't in LA because you get yeah. kind of trumpy people out, out in the OC area. And I'm like, I love doing this because it keeps me strong. It keeps me sharp because I always want to make sure my jokes work for all people. Yeah. So I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> okay, diversity and king. then recently something <laughs> happened with the venue and now he's doing it somewhere else. And he's like, hey, I'm still, I'm building it up again from scratch. So I can't pay you, but do you want to do the show? And I was like, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out because you know, you've been so nice to me. And so he booked me on like a Tuesday show at this like fucking bar. And I'm like, you know, for, and I'm thinking like, cause his previous shows were so packed. I'm like, okay, he's not paying me, but I'm going to film it. I'm going to get some funny crowd work clips and put it on Instagram. It'll be worth it. Yeah. I go, there's like no one there. And I'm like so mad now because it's, I spent like two hours getting there because of traffic, yeah. but I'm like, just fucking chill. Okay. You're doing him a solid. I go on. Everybody's bombing because there's like literally nobody in the audience, right? So I'm like, I'm not, he gave me 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm not going to do 20 minutes of jokes. This is like psycho. Yeah. So I do a little, I do some new stuff, about five minutes worth of new stuff, it bombs. Then I just kind of like podcast it, right? I'm sitting on a fucking stool talking to people in the crowd. Yeah. There's no one in the crowd. So I'm like, I guess I'm talking to comedians, but I don't know them because I didn't come up in the Huntington Beach scene. Yeah. There's an old lady who is sitting there. She parked next to me in the parking lot. And when she pulled up, I noticed that her Prius was making like an insane sound. So I was like, oh, hey, are you the lady that parked next to me with the Prius? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, dude, your car's making like a crazy sound. Like you should check it out or something. And she goes, right now? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I saw it like 45 minutes ago, but like do whatever you want. So she goes out, checks it, comes back. And she goes, oh, you know what? I pulled forward too much and it scratched the, the, mm. the top. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm glad it's not the thing, but you know, you should take care of, you should, you should take care of the Prius because gas prices are expensive. And you know, I made some yeah. joke about how that's like cocaine right now, whatever. Haha. Ha. It's not, wasn't that mm -hmm. funny. But anyways, so I, that's all I said. It was, it wasn't even really crowd work. I was just like telling her about her car. Right. Yeah. I get off stage. I'm leaving. I'm in a bad mood because I'm like, I turned down like a don't tell comedy show for this. Cause that's, fu that's the worst because I, but I did it out of respect because don't yeah. tell hit me up last minute and they usually pay 50 bucks and it's a way better show, but he hit me up last minute and I was like, out of respect, I'm going to turn it down because I already promised this other guy to do it. So I drive this down and I'm like, and I'm, this is all happening. Right. And I'm like in a bad mood. 
I say bye to the guy, but he's being kind of weird. He just says bye to me from like a distance without looking at me. And I was like, that's weird. But I'm also like in a bad mood. So I was like, I don't care. I'm driving home. I get back. And then I'm like watching some anime on my fucking phone. And then like he sends me this fucking insane email. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. Okay, the title of the email is called Crowd Work. Okay, <gasps> it goes, the woman whose car you made fun of at the bar show tonight is 81 years old. Her husband died a few months ago. He was the love of her life. She misses him so much that she cries whenever she mentions him. Last month, she was diagnosed with early onset dementia. She comes to her shows to perform, to, to perform short sets at the end to keep her mind active because she is afraid of losing her mind, going insane, and ultimately dying. She used to work at the comedy store in the late 70s. She was friends with George Carlin. She has a lot of great stories and information about that time period in comedy. She doesn't have anyone to take her to get her car fixed. She might not have the money to get it fixed either. Please disregard any future show dates that I had you oh booked for. God. And if I ever contact you again regarding anything, please disregard the message. I would only be contacting you by mistake. Thank you. <gasps> Isn't this insane? That is crazy because it's like, sorry, girlina, to the old lady. Like, that is sad. But instead of him being like, hey, here's the story. Like, like, don't like, talk to her. Don't talk to her again. How would, I, how, how would I know this? Also, I didn't shit on her. I just talked to her about her broken car. Or whatever. And also, no if idea. she was a comedian, she should also, get the joke. Exactly. This lady, That's what I was saying. So this lady, it's, after the show, introduced herself to me. And we talked and she added me on Instagram. So clearly, like her and I are Gucci. It's about him. It's his issue that he's projecting onto you. Maybe he has a grandma or something and he like, maybe he has no a grandma <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, he feels so sad rare. about yeah. that he was really mean to and he's like, oh, I don't want this to happen to, you know, for me to do this. I know. I think it's but a personal thing. I guess it yeah. made me kind of like question myself financially because... Wait, I, yeah, what does it have to do with money? Okay. <laughs> it has to do with money because I think sometimes in comedy... The hardest part is not writing a killer joke or hustling. It's the people. I think sometimes yeah. he, people in this industry, not just comedy, but entertainment in general, you can't apply logic to them. Yeah. And you can't you can't apply logic to somebody who's crazy. This is a crazy thing to do. This is a crazy email to send somebody. Yeah. And so like sometimes you feel like you're not really in control because you piss somebody off because of this thing that you didn't even know you were doing. And they react to you. And I and it kind of got me just thinking about it. I got a little sad about it. I was like, oh man, mm -hmm. like if something like this happened to me on a bigger scale, I would be much more upset. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel that it has to some people for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just saying this is like, I don't know. It kind of just scared me about me being full-time comedy because I'm like, I don't know who I'm pissing off. But I think that's like actually a next level you like, you obviously like already at like the professional level, but it's like the mental level that you have to get to of like not giving a fuck what people think. Right. Because like with the podcast is like, if I ever read reviews, I get so in my head. Right, right. Because half of them are good. Half mm. of them are horrible. Right, right. And so it's like, you just aren't for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because if you find your audience and like your niche, then like you're chilling. Right, right. And it's right. like, as soon as you start questioning like, everything about like you or like if who you're gonna piss off or tiptoe around that's when you like stop being like your best creative mm -hmm. self obviously yeah. there are rules to that don't be a bigot don't cross like a hard line but yeah. it's like you're a nice guy you didn't do anything wrong so end of story guys if you're listening to this third person talk fucking yipping and yapping <laughs> cracking the jokes <laughs> being latina okay <laughs> cancel me what's good um uh, we have a guest today. We're so Yay. excited. She's a good friend of mine. Uh, one of the first friends I met and in, in made it made in, first like good friend I made in LA. Oh. You know? Uh, very funny comedian, actress. She has, uh, honestly, I don't think I'm wrong in saying this. I think it's like one of the biggest podcasts in America. <laughs> I think that is fair to say. You probably have heard of it. Uh, she is the co-host of the amazing podcast, uh, Sounds Like a Cult. Give it up for the amazing Yay! Isa Medina. Yay! What's up? It's funny because there's like no people here other than us. <laughs> Cheer yeah, for yeah, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show, dude. Thanks for having me. I am like a fan of your podcast. I like literally listen to it. <laughs> that is I, I That's do, really nice. I actually like don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> and yeah. I like listen to yours because at first I was just like, oh, I like want to support and like, yeah. and why not? And I listened to it. And then I was like, okay, like now I like listen to this thing. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, yeah. Isa. People have been saying that. Yeah. I People feel like that don't listen to pod or like because our friends who are comedians, they don't listen to any of our other shit. I know. But then they're like, <laughs> this one they'll like listen to. Because which is everybody thinks about money, dude. Yeah. And I feel like that's the magic of it is like, you don't have to be a famous person. Just you, a, a random guest talking about 
how much they spend on their car is yeah. like already kind of like yeah, you know, yeah. kind of gets people even i like l- obviously this was gonna sound so stupid i was gonna be like i like love money <laughs> i yeah, love talking <laughs> about money like because it's so fascinating how different people deal with it and that's what you guys talk about right right yeah right. well let's start it off dude how are you doing financially i'm chilling uh <laughs> but I did lose my wallet uh, yesterday and I was like panicking, freezing all of my cards. But Wait, what happened to it? I was at a show in Eagle Rock and then I like rushed out to make it to a show in West Hollywood. And then when I got to West Hollywood, I didn't have it. And then I literally and I live in Los Feliz. So then I drove. I tried to call the bar. They didn't answer. And then I drove all the way back to Eagle Rock to look for it at the bar. They didn't have it. And then I drove home and I just gave up. And I was like, it's fucking lost. Are you like a wallet in a purse girl or in your pocket girl? In my pocket. Because then Mm. I found it today. Oh, you found it. But it's crazy because I literally looked all over my car. I looked everywhere. And then today before I like went to the bank to like get a new card, I was like, you know what? I'm going to look one more time. And it was in the like spectrum bag under my like old like Wi-Fi routers. What, in your... In the back of my car. This is actually what I think happened is like, I think we live in a simulation. And like, I think yeah. my simulator was <laughs> yes. like, all right, she's like suffered enough. And then like popped it back in the back Dude. of my car. Suffered for like 90 minutes. Dude. Uh, a day. I okay, maybe it. like I 16 yeah. hours. Well, shout out um, to your... I don't know to the, to, the yeah. simulator game You're, guy. Yeah, shout controller. out to my to controller. <laughs> also, the reason I was 15 minutes late today. Get it, get it together, my guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, what was your relationship with money growing up, Isa? Um, that is a good question. It's like, where do I start? I was born in. <laughs> yeah, you, I was gonna oh, say yeah. you guys are both South American. Oh yeah, you you were born in Brazil or no, like I have citizenship, in, but I I grew up okay. part of my life over there. And That's you're from very cool. Columbia, Columbia. Right? yeah. Did you grow up over there? No, I moved to America when I was seven, and before America, we lived in Bolivia for three years, Ooh, which I didn't is know that. super Ooh, random. I don't okay. tell people because it's like a whole story. A whole, no, I feel you know, you. I, feel you. I just I'm like I'm from Colombia, and I moved to America when I was seven. Yeah, but we moved to Bolivia when I was like four. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Culturally, right. where do you get most of like your like what you guys celebrate at home? Colombia like, for Columbia. sure, because I grew up going back to Colombia every summer. Like for three months, I would stay with my grandma. Mm-hmm. Same. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was like I grew up like practicing my Spanish every summer and like living in Colombia for three months out of the year. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like I'm very much like culturally Colombian and we speak Spanish in the house. And like, I mean, it's very much like an immigrant vibe. I've mm. heard you tell your story, too. And it's like when we moved to America, I had like very little like lived in a two bedroom apartment. And like my parents like just grinded. Oh, and really? Yeah. Like they have their own business and they started it out of like literally like selling flowers out of like a van vibe and then but very but you know they're like college educated and they had worked in like big corporations in Colombia so mm-hmm. they like started the business from scratch but very quickly like built it up mm-hmm. um and then we moved into like a townhouse when i was like in like fifth fourth grade and then we moved into like a single family home when i was in sixth grade so growing up did you ever feel like you were like less than like i guess financially relative to your friends because you grew up in virginia right there's probably a lot of yeah. people you went to school with definitely i think like at first i didn't realize when we were less than i didn't realize we were less than right. you know well, like when we were kid. getting our clothes like at walmart and stuff i yeah. was like cool i love this like puffy jacket mm. it's so mm. comfy but then when i got to like high school i definitely we were very much middle class so i I I'm very I feel like I'm very self-aware of money because mm. I've always been like right in the middle, you know? So like I could see people had less, but I could also see people who had like a lot more. more. Yeah. And there were definitely kids in my high school who like the rich kid neighborhood was called Balmoral and it was like uh these houses with like 5 acres of land, like literal mansions and like all those kids had like brand new cars, you know, mm-hmm. in what high were your school. Parents like th- like idea of that right like growing up in a place where you were kind of like aware of the money did they ever talk about like the like things in a classist way or yeah my parents can be my parents honestly can be a little classist sometimes because like they grew up like not always but like they had money in colombia mm. yeah that's always the so case it's like, they're, it's doing, like they're doing great in the homeland and yeah then they come here and then they feel weird about being like lower middle class yeah, yeah exactly and so then it was like but that's then they did spend like even though like they had money there like they used it all uh, spent it all to move here and then they didn't have like anything so like it's starting from scratch but they do have like the education of being able to like know how to build uh, it back mm, up mm-hmm. 
but they it's funny my dad's like classic dad super cheap like never buys himself clothes or socks or anything like and then the only we always joked around like my dad like never knew where things came from in the house like what do you mean like our clothes or our furniture he was just like oh like when did we get that and my mom's like oh, we've always had it, you know? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, she yeah. would buy things behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that must be like an immigrant thing. Yeah. Is that what it is? Wait, did you have things hidden? I think so, but like, and, she, it wasn't like really behind his back. Like to your point, it's like, it'd be like in the living room. Yeah, so no, it wasn't be behind like, his back. And I feel like he also played <laughs> dumb into it. Yeah. Because he didn't want to know. Because my mom, my parents run a business together. My mom is like oh. the finances of the business. My dad's like the salesman. Yeah. And my mom's like the accountant and HR and everything <laughs> so else. So she could just <laughs> budget herself like something. for. Yeah. So she would like budget for the house and things and like and my dad would ultimately know that she was like spending the money, but he yeah. didn't want to like, if if she were to be like, hey, should we buy a new dining room table? He'd be like, we don't need that. Why are you spending money on that? That's stupid. Whereas instead she would just be like, I bought a new dining room right, table. Right, right. And he would be like, oh, that's nice. He would see it in the room. It would look nice. Yeah, or like with our clothes, he would be like, is that a new sweater? And we'd be like, no, we always had it. <laughs> that's interesting. Cause like, I think that in our f- in our family and a lot of like, I don't know if this is a Korean thing. Maybe you know, uh, like in our Korean Americans or Koreans that immigrated here, I have so many aunties who would tell me like, "Yo, if you ever get married, you need to hide some money." Like <gasps> I don't know if it's what if they had to do that or well, hide no, they definitely f- wait, did it who? themselves the from spouse? your partner, from their partner, <gasps> because of the fact that they control women through oh. money. So they're like, mm. whenever you have money, hide it. Or their mothers. I think my grandma money. was like that My on my mom, on my dad's side of the family, mm. for sure, because she was like a stay-at-home like mom and my grandpa on my dad's side was like the breadwinner and stuff. Yeah. But with my mom and dad's relationship, it's definitely not that like my dad's in control. It's that my dad thinks he's in control. Right. You know? <laughs> Which is smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get like an allowance from your parents or anything like that? I actually wanted to and I wrote I wish I took a picture of it. I wrote a allowance contract I found. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I wrote an allowance contract <laughs> and in I'm going to ask my mom to send me a picture and then we can oh. maybe read it at the end. But I wrote an allowance contract where it was like, if you forget to like give me allowance, you have to pay me like 20 cents a day Yo. on interest for every day that you're late on wow, the allowance. Dude. Why is this contract benefiting you? That's hilarious. Because, like, I, the one giving you because I only got my allowance <laughs> if I did all of my chores and there was like a list of chores. Oh, so you did it. Yeah. And now- and it was only 20. It was $20 a month. And it was like for every day that they were late on paying me, they had yeah. to pay me 20 cents incrementally. Oh were they paying God. you? Were they like- and They never paid me. And I had a signing you? sheet. I had a sign sheet attached to it. Oh and my, my dad gosh. signed for two months. That's and hilarious. then he never signed again. And we found it over Christmas this year. And I was like, yo, you owe me a bunch of money. <laughs> the interest has really racked yeah. up for the last 10 years. That's hilarious. Dude, I bet when your parents saw that, they were like so proud. I, they, I bet they're like, Issa's going to be like an amazing businesswoman. They wanted me. Well, I wanted to go to law school. They were like really happy that I wanted to go to law school. I also wrote a contract when I got a dog about like all the things I needed to do for the like, because I really wanted a dog. They didn't want me to get a dog yeah. so i wrote this whole contract that was like i'll do like this this and this and yeah like, yeah but then you became a podcaster <laughs> yeah I, like i mean i did want to go to law school but then i like was like i don't like studying <laughs> yeah it's like a shit would you ever work. go back or would you go no. Now? no i think i would i did end up getting i have a master's in public policy and i would potentially go into like running for public office (laughs) (laughs) low-key well so you make most of your money now through the podcast yeah right so did you think when you first started or before you started the podcast did you think that there was a future for you in podcasting where you could make all your money there not to this extent for sure like i like treated the podcast as a proof of concept because i was working as an associate producer at a documentary production company Mm -hmm. and I lost my job during the pandemic and then I was like freelancing and then we started this podcast and I was like, oh, if I like produce and host and like edit this podcast, I'll have like 10 episodes where I can like go and interview at a company and be like, I made this. Mm -hmm. And so like that was the plan. And Amanda also just wanted to like promote her book and then we ended up doing like four bonus episodes. So we released like 14 episodes our first season because we saw like an uptick in listeners and then it kind of just like, 
made sense for us to keep doing it because we were like, oh, we can monetize this. But when we started going weekly, we didn't, I didn't think it was going to be my full-time job. Mm. And then we went weekly in February. And then by like May of 2021, I was like, oh, I quit my job. Wow, and then that's amazing. Job. Yeah. What do you think that uptick was where you, it sounds like at that uptick in the first season, that's when you decided to quit or, or like you knew that you could do this. Like that's over. when I knew. Yeah. Cause our like a- agents, like we were at. I don't want to say like all the details, Mm -hmm. but like we were at an agency because Amanda was repped there for book to film. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we were like, we want to make this podcast. And they were like, okay, whatever. Once you guys get to X number of Mm -hmm. number streams, reach out to us. And I think it was like, they literally said 17,000 an episode Mm -hmm. and reach out to us. And then we can go to ad agencies and get you guys monetized. And then we hit that number and we reached out to them. And then they were like, actually, it needs to be like 20. And then we were like, okay. And then we hit that number. And then we were like, hello. (laughs) Pretty much like they didn't believe in us. And they were like. At this point, you're 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 hitting $17,000. Are you making any money at this point or no? No, we were making zero. We didn't. That's insane. We made zero money off of the first 14 (gasps) episodes. And we were, by the time we finally started making money, we had like millions of streams. (gasps) But. That's but you you are aware now that even before you got to the millions you yeah. lost out on all this not I know lost out, but like I mean no I, had, I know and that's yeah. why like we don't work with that agency anymore right 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 because like we were given like the wrong information yeah and we we could have monetized it from the beginning Instantly. yeah and um so then also we weren't planning on going weekly we were just going to be seasonal and then with the new net like the network that we went to which we're with now um they were like you guys should go weekly like it would benefit you a lot more mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we went weekly and i think that's when we saw the most growth because we were like consistent right, right and we right. were like there and so that's like the people who like were fans were there and then also we were finding new listeners right right do you okay so now like now that you do podcasting full-time this is how you pay for your living how does it feel for you? Because do you feel that it's a little bit more stable than being like a full-time stand-up comedian? I mean, I, I know you still do all that, but like, you know, it sounds like podcasting wasn't something you're really thinking about when you first started. And now that you do this full-time, yeah. and it's funding your rent, your food, your travels, everything. Like, how does it all kind of feel? It's funny because I didn't think of podcasting as a possibility, not because I like didn't think that I could do Hold on, I'm gonna rephrase that. Like it was like it's I didn't think of it as a possibility because it felt like the podcast space was so saturated Mm -hmm. that it was like it would be impossible to break through. But I feel like just doing the show with no expectations almost helped Mm -hmm. because we were like, we're just gonna put our best foot forward and see what happens. And I think that's like I've learned so much about how important the dynamic is. I think you guys have an amazing dynamic. I think it's like, it's really like concept and dynamic. And then like from there, it's like all vibes. And like, if the right people find you. (laughs) 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 But but I don't know. It it feels really good. It is scary for sure. I think I I was talking to like other podcasters recently who were like, oh, have you gotten, um, what is that called when you um, have a, Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Imposter. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were like, a lot of new podcasters get imposter syndrome because you're like, oh, I'm just like a normal person. Like, why are people listening to me talk? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I definitely have that. But I think that's why like a lot of podcasters seek overall deals or they seek those big network deals because then they're like guaranteed minimums and they don't have to like worry, worry about, about the numbers. You're right, right, Which, right, right. But for any podcasters out there listening and you guys, you just should like... um make sure you like are always like getting the best deal possible Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's why a lot of the biggest podcasts stay independent because that's how you make the most money. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do you want more money or do you want security? I don't know. Right, right, right. I don't Um, know. So before you went full-time podcasting, you were working at this documentary thing, right? Yeah. And I remember you were telling me, uh, it wasn't like six figures. It was like a good amount of money. Yeah. You're making like... I was making like 70K. And that's great. That's yeah. great for somebody in their 20s. That's great. But now you make significantly more. I was wondering not like... Not that much more, everybody. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I was With wondering. benefits? You were getting benefits during that? No, I was not getting benefits. I've always worked at independent production companies and like you get like no benefits. Oh, sure. Do, wait, do yeah, you get benefits okay. as a podcaster? No. I pay for my own health insurance. Oh, sure. That's what I thought. Yeah. That'd be crazy. But yeah. I'm like charging it to so, my business card now. <laughs> what was the first like 
crazy purchase you'd bought with this the new money because comedy money i always talk about this it kind of feels <laughs> fake because like you, you're doing it from like talking about dicks and shit yeah you know and then when they give you like a significant amount of money it doesn't feel real and yeah. i know when i first like started w- working as a writer i bought like crazy amount of shoes and like just like you know i'm going a little crazy did you have a thing like that where you're like yeah well really quickly i do want to address like it feels fake because you get it so late you get paid out 60 to 90 days after the ad runs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so then it's like, oh, I already did all that work. And now it's like a big lump sum. Mm. Right. But for those people listening at home, podcasting is a lot of fucking work, dude. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. and I feel like we don't feel like it's work because we're like so used to creating content. Yeah. But it's like now that it's my job, I'm like, I worked two. I worked literally from like 930 to 530 on Monday and Tuesday today, literally like recording, editing, uploading, like fucking doing all this shit. Yeah. And then that we did that so that we could try and focus on other things later in the week. Yeah. But then we still have to like give notes and provide feedback and like do other random things and post on social. So it's like, it's a lot of work. Sorry. I haven't answered the question. So (laughs) I think you know the answer. I know the answer. Uh, I got a Tesla. Hey. You made it in that way, dude. But like, yeah. Is it you bought it or you lease it or what is it? I bought it. Oh, I didn't know. I thought you were leasing it. No, I bought it. I thought that's why your insurance was so high. Yeah, no, my insurance is high because I got the Tesla insurance because getting a Tesla is like psychotic because I kind of bought it as a joke and hold on. That's going to sound crazy (laughs) (laughs) because when you buy a Tesla, you only have to pay $350 as the down payment. And because they're back. So they're like backlogged. They're, oh no, $250. They're backlogged by two to three months on like making the Teslas. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you put in your order, it costs $250 to put in a Tesla okay. order. order. And so I put in the Tesla order like right when I quit my job because I was like, hee hee, this is funny. Yeah. And, I, and, and then <laughs> I was like- You don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. Okay, you okay, just okay. lose the $250 yeah. if you then can't this afford it. This is funny. Let me order a fucking Model S. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I ordered a Tesla for $250 and then I was like, okay, I have three months to like manifest being able to afford this yeah. Tesla. And by the time it came around, I like could afford it. Yeah. And because it was like, because yeah, yeah. I had been working two jobs for six months and like the podcast began monetizing faster than I thought it would. And so I had a full time job and I had the podcast. So I saved like so much money. So I put like a bunch down and now I pay like a low monthly rate. How much did you put down? Can you talk about that? And also, I put 20K down. 20K. Yeah. How much is How a much Tesla? Is a, yeah. Um, it, after it's like. five, right? Yeah. They say it's like 39 and then it ends up being like. 45 and then it ends up after because i financed it after being financed because mm. you have to pay interest, interest yeah. on that it comes out to like 55 or so yeah, yeah, so yeah, how yeah. much do you pay a month like 550 550 and then after insurance and then insurance is about another three four hundred dollars 350 350 Oh, can you get because most of my friends who have Teslas which I feel I don't know why I feel like weird telling people a lot of people have Teslas it's fine yeah, I know <laughs> but it, no, I feel weird telling people about how much money I'm paying for because I <laughs> literally when I like moved to LA hey, I bought talking. my car off Facebook market for literally five thousand dollars so I've like never had a car payment in my life yeah and my car insurance was like really shitty so I just like had you it's because you're from the East Coast. Like yeah. everyone in LA is obsessed with their car and it's yeah. a status thing. It's it's everything because you're using it so much. But anyone I know from the East Coast that moves out to LA always has their first car is like pretty shitty and they yeah. don't care. Yeah. yeah. I bought my car off Facebook Marketplace too. It's yeah, really it's great. Time. I mean, it literally, I like I'm like it $5,000 for five years, for four years mm-hmm. of a perfectly working car. It was lit. Now that you have like uh, a, a sexual podcast do you have a financial advisor i don't but i like need one hmm. anyone out there <laughs> <laughs> i i i don't because i've so we obviously get paid like pre-tax so right now i'm coming up on like my first time ta- like it, it's literally been like one year you know yeah, like yeah. since we like launched weekly um and so right now my main concern is taxes and so i'm like i have a bunch saved because i have to pay a bunch of taxes yeah and so once i get Bro, through tax that's season so rough yeah when you don't i remember in 2021 so like i have an escort so i didn't get taxes taken out i had to pay fifty thousand dollars that hurts what? so much fifty thousand for state and federal together 
that gives me anxiety and i remember i texted all my other friends who had just gotten writing jobs were like is this right and then we all were like i don't know and then so we all like behind our accountant's backs hired another accountant to be like my guy might be on drugs like can you yeah and they're like can you just do like a free consulting and they're like yeah that sounds about right because you didn't pay any taxes and i was like did you write anything off oh i wrote a bunch of shit off but like not as much as i i didn't really understand like how to the extent of how much you i, I you know i yeah. put a bunch of like restaurants and shit on there but restaurants are not 100 percent deductible it's only but 50%. if you work yeah that's crazy. so this year like i deducted like my car yeah you know, i 80 percent of my my driving is comedy related yeah so gas like car wash anything insurance yeah. all that shit you know but that first year like i don't have a lot of expenses really because it's have a crazy car and, and like, like i did get like a good accountant this year because i was like it's an investment because and that like, guy costs money yeah it's gonna cost i think it's gonna cost like two thousand yeah, no, dollars that's, which that's at right. first yeah. sounds like a lot but i'm like you're saving so much money right 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 and i actually need to follow up with my guy <laughs> you were actually the reason I got an accountant because Why? you were like I was like what are you doing hello text me Why? back why aren't you texting me back and then you were like I'm doing my taxes dude and I was like oh shit I gotta do that oh yeah I, I wow. don't know why my friends keep taking financial advice from me I'm a, I'm a nobody no, you but it, love it the, and like yeah. you have you literally a, have a podcast background. about it why don't you like that should be your side hustle you should give financial advice to people that make jokes yeah. when I left <laughs> like, my other podcast we had an LLC and this guy Mike he was like could I pay you to just stay on and do our accounting? Wow. Because <laughs> I did all the taxes. Yeah. And he has to do it by himself this year. And he hates that shit. So he's yeah. like asking me all these questions. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I'm not part of it. That's why I'm like, I mean, even the crazy thing is that even if you get an accountant, you have to like do your bookkeeping. Yeah, you do And you yourself. have to send it to that literally. <laughs> I don't know if like I talked to you that week, but there was a week where I was like being a bitch to like everyone I know because I was like doing the bookkeeping and I was like, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also am like, should I get an escort? Yes. Wait, yes. <laughs> oh, you think so? Fuck. Because Wally, Wally was the one who told me to get an escort. Well, I I have thoughts about that. I don't think you need one unless you are consistently getting paychecks. Yeah. What is consistent? But I feel like you're pretty consistent. Like she's consistently getting a paycheck from her network. You know, oh, I'm not I was, mine's freelance, but so I then get just do an like, LLC. Do an LLC. Those but are mine is like low key freelancey vibes too. Because if you have an S corp, you have to pay depending on who you use. You have to every month. I have to pay forty five dollars to this payroll company to do pay. You have to enroll in payroll if you have an S corp. No, LLCs, but you can you do you can do QuickBooks, which is like super cheap. The reason I think an S corp is well, can you open a credit card with an LLC? Yes. Oh, okay. So then maybe, yeah, but... I don't think QuickBooks is a... That's not what I'm talking about with QuickBooks payroll. QuickBooks is, is bookkeeping. Is Yeah. No, but bookkeeping and they have, is, is and not, they it's have not payroll. payroll. Oh, they have payroll. Yeah. Okay. So like 45 so is not that much. So the S-Corp, like, you have to pay yourself a salary. Mm -hmm. And right. that's like the hard part. Mm -hmm. But if you... The reason I... I don't know you could open a credit card with an LLC. I think that the reason the credit card thing is important or even a debit card is because then that immediately helps you separate your finances. You know, you're like, oh, I'll put this on my business card because it's a business expense. I'll yeah. put this on my personal card because mm -hmm. it's a personal mm -hmm. expense. Yeah. If you don't have a business card, I think it's making your whole life harder. It's <gasps> it's easier for taxes. Like with LLC, you can have a different bank account. I think it's, it's important to have a separate bank account for yeah. all business shit because like, then it just... It's become so easy for taxes. Okay. Um, I think I should do now that. Was, <laughs> I swear, on. every week, <laughs> this is half podcast, half Steffi just like taking notes. Yeah, I and love I'm like, excuse that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you tell some jokes well, instead I of <laughs> taking notes and doing your own taxes? As we did. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. Wait, I wait. swear to God, she's not hosting this podcast. <laughs> she's just listening to us talk. <laughs> Wait, I have to take a picture of her. What is she doing over there? What is she doing? <laughs> Wait. What is she doing over there? Bank account business. <laughs> Dude. A blank sheet of Google Doc and just one sentence. Bro, oh I my am about God. Bank account business S Corp. This is so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude oh, yo. i gotta pay for my uh the gas and everything coming out here man God i damn. gotta figure this shit God out damn. dude that's I'm another reason a tesla is a great investment because no gas okay but let's be honest though that's how true. much are you paying for the charging thing okay so 
for charging it is expensive if you go to like a supercharger but it's fast. i found an outlet in my garage <laughs> that i plug it into <laughs> bitch and it's just that's just and i don't know where it's too. plugged into oh it may not be your <laughs> well, it's a landlord know. or whoever you're oh well, they don't shit. listen to this podcast so you just brought like an extension cord from like home depot and you just like <laughs> no extension cord because i think it's like a fire hazard but it's okay. like if there's an outlet there's an outlet in my garage shit. i'm using it oh my god it's a fly to a light bulb you're like what <laughs> 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 that's amazing do you budget when you go travel or are you just kind of like no when i'm off? on vacation we are going off vibes we're going so you're in, going off vibes we are going into <laughs> debt yeah, even vibe. if you have to like i'm i do not Yo, care it's like because once you're on vacation so you're like Yo, first Turn it off. off. Bank of America. <laughs> they got a loan in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> like, God because damn. here's the thing. You're there to relax. And I grew up with my dad who made it a point to like be so cheap on vacation. And I was like stressed out all the time. Like he didn't want me to get like Coca-Cola. Like if we went to like the like if we went on vacation to like the Caribbean <gasps> or something. Yeah. Coca-Cola is so expensive in the Caribbean because okay. it's like an island and it's like an import or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, get water. And I was like, we're on vacation. Like I want Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now I'm like, bitch, I'm getting Coca-Cola. <laughs> 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 when, so now I'm like, I don't care. She's in debt because of Coca-Cola. Yeah. yeah. Is that what your parents, what, what did your parents splurge on? Vacations. When, really? Like, so what, they if, you did good, like if you were like getting good grades or something or uh, you just graduated. So they didn't really like treat me for good grades or anything, but they would splurge on vacations. Oh, vacations. So like we went, we grew up, like my dad learned to sail in like the Potomac or like he had, he had heard about, sa he like had gone sailing with like some friends early on in life. And then he took sailing classes in the Potomac, like in DC. And then he became obsessed with sailing. So we would go to the British Virgin Islands and rent a boat for a week and like go sailing on the Whoa. boat. That's cool. Which is like, everyone is like that's such a fancy vacation and it is but my parents would like it's like make it like cheap like they would rent like oh. they no, would get no such coke. good deals we would go in off season so there was always literally a hurricane <laughs> <laughs> it's like people die so yeah the boats like are literally it was like we would go in august which is like hurricane season <laughs> oh my god there's that's definitely so funny. There's definitely but, like a GoPro footage of me somewhere being like, I think we're gonna die. Like. <laughs> Wait, that's so funny because uh, off season vacationing <laughs> is definitely my vibe too. Well, not my vibe. My family like we'd always go to Vegas uh, like in the summer because like always cheaper because like way hotter. Yeah, and stuff like that. But it is so funny to apply that to the water because it is so dangerous it's to go so during dangerous dude season. and my dad would like like he would be like isn't it so fun like we're surviving and i'm yeah. like dude like we literally could die <laughs> a fucking cow in yeah the surviving. <laughs> and so like with with sailing it's almost like camping because it's like you eat breakfast and lunch on the boat yeah and then like even dinner sometimes but like we would treat ourselves to like go out to dinner once that's we got to so like crazy. an island or a location and then that's when my dad was like all right, we're already eating out, like save money on like yeah, the soda. Yeah, yeah. You had a group dinner, you got one app, but some guy suggests you split the bill equally. Do you say something? I did recently say something. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Well, I ended up paying it because she had already like Venmo charged anyone and she was like, okay. Oh, it's too late. I, she was, well, she was like, she was like, so I went to dinner with a bunch of people and everyone had three drinks at like 20 bucks a pop. Mm. I had one drink and shared a meal and we split it all evenly mm -mm. and <laughs> and we also it was like it was like 80 dollars. <sighs> yeah like it wasn't like cheap yeah. and i got the venmo charge and i was just like hey is there any way i could get charged just like 20 bucks less mm. like one drink fee less mm. and she was like okay i just have to like text everyone and ask them to Venmo me back like $20. No. And I was fuck like, this I friend. know. What and the fuck? She's great. I love you, girl. But <laughs> but like, I was like, Jesus. I literally said, Jesus Christ, never mind. And oh then I just like God. paid her. Whoa. She shamed you. She that shamed you into doing that. I know. And like, it is this weird thing because like, once you know you're like making more money than your like friends you do feel more awkward about it yeah. but like it's still money like I'm still paying yeah. for this and like I do invite friends out and I pay for meals and I pay for drinks but that's when I want to and because I like it's a treat and like I want to take you out and I like treat on me but I'm like when we did this thing where like that wasn't like what we decided on it like feels a little like 
frustrating, but then I feel bad complaining because I know it's not like I'm not in a place where I like can't afford the twenty dollars. It's the just principle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think yeah. it should be dis- what do you think if we just discussed it at the top? So we did we discussed it and I was like, I'll put it on my card and then I'll Venmo charge everyone and like they were all drunk because they were like three drinks oh. in. Oh. And then this <laughs> other girl was like, No, I got it. And like it just was this thing where I also didn't know half the group. So then I was like, if I do put it on my card, it's like I'm doing all this work to then like Save pay like, twenty dollars less. How much do you think you should have paid? I feel like I should have paid like forty five. Honestly, Your one drink was forty five dollars. No, because I shared some food. Oh, gotcha. So I got it. I got a. I didn't even get an expense. Well, I got a glass of wine. They so all got like, cocktails. That's probably like ten. Your glass yeah, it was. Like it 10. was like fourteen for a glass of wine, and then I shared a pizza and like a pasta with two other girls okay. between the three of us, and so mm-hmm. then everyone got like a bunch of food and apps and dessert and then like everyone got like three cocktails and i was just like i the details are vivid you've been thinking about this for a minute yeah it just happened <laughs> did you think about it were you it just <laughs> happened <laughs> before you sent that text did you like reread it multiple times and think about how you're gonna ask for because that's no, what happened to me so no because if i had reread it or if i had even thought about it i wouldn't have even asked mm. but i was on a ski trip <laughs> at the time and i got the text and i had literally just paid like this ski Airbnb Venmo okay. charge. And then I just got charged for Coachella. And then it was like, and then Amanda charged me for like three editing fees that we had like split from previous like freelance editors. I literally had like $900 in Venmo charges. Venmo debt. And then I literally got hit with this like $80. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. not today, bitch. <laughs> yeah. But then I paid it anyway. Yeah. Oh, That's shit. Funny. Yeah. I for me it's like a I don't know if it's a cultural thing but for me I think of it as a cultural thing like when I'm hanging out with my I have done this so many times where I end up paying for everyone's alcohol. I don't drink at all. Oh so my it's got God. Yeah, so it it's gotten to now like literally in the last 2 years where I started speaking up. Because you have yeah, to. Yeah, you should not be well especially if you didn't drink at all. At all. Zero, but you'd alcohol be surprised. Is, dude, drinks in LA it's literally $20 for a cocktail. I don't know if it's worth it for someone who like was just having one drink, but for you literally who doesn't drink, could you go up to the server beforehand? <laughs> like, oh I'm God. sorry. I'm sorry, I dude. I'm for I love real. This. I love because this. first of all, servers make it seem like it's so hard to split the bill. It's not that it's hard. It's fucking not. I don't but, hate that. But be, if they, but if you go right up top and be like, hey, can you put all my stuff on a separate bill? You should just do that right up top. Dude, Yo, like, you look that's if, no, that, if you're a friend, to, if you're a friend that that you wouldn't think, oh, that's kind of. I'd respect. No, if, I'd respect. I would respect it, especially if they didn't drink. If they yeah. didn't drink, I would like. Well, I would respect it if they did drink and they just were like, I don't want to. The the annoying thing about doing the splitting and stuff is because one, it becomes a conversation. Yeah. But if you're removing the conversation aspect Ooh, of it, yes. you're just like, this is my bill. You're like, oh, you can also be really casual. You can be like, hey, guys, I already took care of my bill. Like, That's all. This is good. your problem now. Yeah. Yo. Dude. I can't do That's it. The That's move. you no, have to. I want to do that. That feels so weird. To what me. if I just come with you next time, but <laughs> I'm like sitting at a different table? <laughs> I FaceTime her, and then I like, and then oh, you FaceTime me, and then I just I'm like, hey guys, she already took care of this. <laughs> like, oh who are God. you? And they just go off <laughs> in your Tesla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm your like fairy bill godmother. Oh my God, I love you. That is amazing. So in this part of the game, uh, it's called the audit. We look at your credit card statements, which you've sent over, yeah. and we analyze it. I sent five unedited screenshots. Yeah, what, By the what way, kind what, of card what, is that? So yeah, what kind of card is it? And also like, what is this a business card, personal card? What is yeah. it? That Just one's personal, and it's Chase oh, it's Sapphire. Reserve or preferred? Mm. Preferred, the okay. cheaper one. Yeah. I just downgraded to that one recently. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. about the reason I only the only reason I was gonna upgrade was because of it covers your like TSA pre check thingy. But it's or, like eighty dollars. Exactly. For three years. Yeah. So then I was like, I'll just pay for it. No, one hundred percent. Okay, this is your personal card. I thought it was a business actually, but No, it's personal. Um I have some overall notes. Mm. Uh you eat out every day. You know that. <laughs> yeah. You know that. Uh, do you not cook? I cook I always cook breakfast except when i don't <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding. laughs> it's just every day no no i i do have a goal of like eating breakfast at home every day but sometimes i'll have like oatmeal and like toast at home but then i'll still have like a coffee out or something mm-hmm. okay um but 
Yeah, I just have been, I think the last six months specifically have been so crazy. I've been traveling a lot. And like, I, by the time I get home, I'm like, it takes me a while to settle back in. And then I also just moved. Yeah, I think I'm just like addicted to DoorDash. I don't know how else to That's explain okay. it. That's okay. Well, we have some questions about the, these these DoorDash purchases because <laughs> yeah. they're quite interesting. Right off the bat, uh, January 30th, $59 on a DoorDash charge from a place called The Cheese. Yeah. <clears throat> the Cheese. The Cheesecake Factory. Hell yeah. That is great. We That's my girl. <laughs> DoorDash Cheesecake so Factory combo? That's never been That's seen amazing. before. <laughs> well, because I wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory, but like, I think I might have even texted you. I was like, what is, what are people up to? Like, I'm hungover. I'm trying to go to the Cheesecake I'm Factory. Try, I'm literally trying happening? to go to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I can't get the group together for some reason. <laughs> Nobody wants to go. And I was like, I'm not, not going to have the Cheesecake Factory right now i'm crazy here's the problem i think my most irrational things are always food because i have insane cravings and mm -hmm. so specific i'm like i've seen i it. need sushi from that place on the corner you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. i need those specific things and i was like i need fettuccine alfredo from the cheesecake factory and the like cheeseburger egg rolls like right now 59 bucks so those are the three things i got i got asparagus I got fettuccine Alfredo <laughs> and I got the cheeseburger egg rolls. Wow. She's like such a. And I ate it. Actually, police. I might have a picture on. <laughs> so good. And I right ate now. it in my room on my bed in while watching city? TV. What a goat. Literally. <laughs> that is the best. The Cheesecake Factory is so fucking good. It's so good. And like, I was hungover <sighs> and I was tired. It was actually when I got back from SF Sketchfest. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why, but I booked my, I think because it was cheaper, but I booked my return flight at 6 a.m. on Sunday. I always do that and I regret it. Yeah. Always regret Immediately it. regretted it. But Wait, then, I'm sorry. Was this cheesecake thing a, a, a lunch? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that makes it worse. I don't know. I thought this was like evening. Well, by you the know? time I finally got it, it was like a late lunch. <laughs> wow. And it also turned oh, into shit. dinner. Um, I want to ask about this. February 9th, Denver Airport, 1087. Two questions. What did you buy at the airport? Slash, what is your typical spending behavior at airports? Because I hate spending money at airports, so I don't. I bring my own lunch and I always bring a, uh, a water You're bottle. You're such a nerd. <laughs> I can't believe you take lunch. Oh, I bring I a br lunch. You bring a, bring lunch. a lunch? I always bring what a lunch. What is the lunch? It, I, it's not necessarily that I'm making it. Like, for example, when I flew back from Sketchfest, the night before, I went to the Japanese At supermarket across the street. At a comedy Gia, festival, out. you planned your return meal? Yes. I bought a, a couple so of rice dorky. balls and I had it in my backpack and then I ate it on the airplane. That's disgusting. You're <laughs> just like a little Japanese anime yeah. character. That's, that is so... Is that that what, is not what they do. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, I'm thinking... I don't know if that's what you are, but you're just like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so yeah. what, what was this 1087? I think it was McDonald's. So you buy food at the airport? I do because... <laughs> I want to. And also because you I... Pack. You don't want to pack a lunch. I, I'm not packing a fucking lunch. That's for sure. <laughs> that's insane. But I also get really anxious to fly. I get so anxious. So usually I'm too anxious to even eat at all. Yeah. But then sometimes like if I'm starving, then I'll, I'm like, oh, I feel hungry and I need to do it. I need to eat now because I can. Yeah. Because my anxiety subsided enough that I can eat. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. 10... 87 isn't that high for airports. Yeah, because it's McDonald's. It's McDonald's. How do you feel about like, you know, every time I get something that's a little more substantial, it does being around, it's like a, I always go to bucks. chains at airports because Starbucks, McDonald's, or like potbelly sandwiches, like yeah. they're always going to be like the same price. They do charge up like a dollar or two. Bit, yeah, but it's around but it's the same. Still, oh, that's an interesting yeah. strategy. February 8th, Skylight Books, 1970. What book did you buy? Oh, I forgot what it's called, but I have not read it yet. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel like books are really expensive now. How do you feel about buying books for like $20? I didn't feel good about it. I didn't realize it was that expensive. Mm. I went to the bookshop with Amanda because she like, Loves like is an author. <laughs> and we were, I don't know why we like went. And then um, there was a really, I love like the smell of books. Yeah. I don't like go to bookshops often, but then she was like, this is a really good book. Like you should read it. And I did read the description and I was like, okay, I think I'd like it. So I bought it. But I didn't look at the price before I bought it and yeah. I didn't realize it was going to I be. also think like certain bookstores make you feel like you want to support yes. them. And Skylight, Skylight yeah. is one. Like it's funny. Last week I bought two books because I had two friends who had birthday par birthdays yeah. this week. And so normally I would buy it on Amazon. Like, yeah, which is I have horrible. a Kindle, so I just buy on Kindle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like in the moment, I felt some sort of pressure to like 
support support local. them locally <laughs> also the girl was helping me out and then i was like all right it's 26 dollars per book god yeah, damn that's expensive. That's it's expensive but that's the beauty of these bookstores sometimes like it's they have unique books i would have never thought about buying like, and i like it's like going grocery shopping in person it's like you don't know what you want until you see it yeah so it's like walking through the bookstore it would be kind of like I mean, I have done this before, but it's like kind of annoying to like walk through the bookstore and then be inspired by the books they have and then go on Amazon and buy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I, I have that library app, so I just get like uh, ebooks for free. To oh, play. I need to do that it's with my really Kindle. Libby, you can link Libby it to your Kindle. Called. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. actually incredible. Sponsor and the, the podcast. Sponsor us, sponsor us. Um, February eight. Um, I noticed you went to Maury's Bagel. Mars? Yes, that's like the local bagel shop. Um, do, I want to know what <laughs> yeah. kind of bagel in you LA. Can, yeah, okay. it's one of them. It's, it's in Silver Lake. Oh, okay. You can either choose from that or Courage Bagel or Bell's. Have yeah. you been to any of those? Is this? I have favorite? been to Courage. I have a couple other bagel shops that I really like, but Maury's mm -hmm. is right next to the harbor which is where i get my hair cut oh and how much do you pay for that uh, 150 <gasps> and how often do you go and i put that on my business card that's okay because so i am a business woman yeah you're an on-camera person yeah you could do that stuff uh, like? yeah i think when well, no i didn't they know told yeah, us you should be that. putting if you're your on camera cut. stuff which you are you're in movies and shit you can charge like hair okay shit. wait so okay but <laughs> she's writing it down escort <laughs> 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 and business hair card hair, hair expense yeah. how often do you get your hair cut once like every three months oh that's good wait You're that's more frequent for women no no yeah really no no i don't think so i, I, think th I thought girls go like once a year is that wrong no, no. i do some people do okay. some well, people with bangs it's like at least every three months okay, okay. and i go every three months okay months. this is wild so you say you eat like a like a wild person sometimes <laughs> and I, I support that you know uh i love jury 31st ben and jerry's 925 dude <laughs> that's a lot i got ripped the fuck off that's a lot from one I person went with i wanted andrew to call you and be like, are you okay you li can literally call andrew rolfo we he was like do you want ice cream and i was like okay we went after floppers to yeah. the ben and jerry's uh, around the corner and then <laughs> i was like okay i was like i don't really want ice cream and then he got ice cream because he's addicted to dessert yeah <laughs> and then i got some and i was like all right you know what i'll do a cone and i'll do two scoops and then i paid for it without even looking and then later i saw the charge and i was like what the fuck? Did he put Andrew's Andrew's ice cream on your bill? No. <gasps> just mine. He just fucked up the button. She, I think, first of all, she gave me the wrong flavor. I, oh. she, I asked for two flavors. The second flavor, she gave me the wrong one. And you still took it? I only noticed after I like walked out of the shop. I wasn't going to okay. like turn around yeah, and okay. whatever. She was wearing an AirPod, so that bitch was not listening. Oh, for sure. shit. But she charged me so much and like it was at that point like too like i don't it was too late you know i like and God i didn't damn. i think it's just exp i think that's how expensive ice cream is oh now. so you, you think it's the correct price nine yeah for two to scoops right yeah do, oh, oh, two scoops the, and uh cone because i'll do like a congo Sink scoop at a wonderlust which is one of my fave places Shout and I go, to Uber Gen, I go to like jenny's or yeah, but those are specialized or, like artisanal yeah I, I, but I, I think, think Ben and Jerry's has started to charge more because those artisanal ones have started to charge more. Damn. I was okay. It's nine twenty five. I'm looking cream. at it right now. It says five ninety nine. This is the Hoboken location. <laughs> That's all I could find. Two Hoboken. scoops is five ninety nine plus, which I think the waffle was probably yeah four dollars. Yeah, I think so. No, Did you but no five nine right. I think I maybe Hell tipped no. a dollar, which I shouldn't have because she messed up my flavor. Yeah, but. I think it was uh, five ninety nine for the two scoops, so that's like six dollars plus two dollars for the Awful cone. cone. That's eight. That's eight plus, plus tax. Eight tax. That's nine something. Issa, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Thank uh, you. Where can our fans find you and your work? Um, my work is on the internet. <laughs> uh, my name is Isa Medina and you can find my Instagram at I-S-A-A-M-E-D-I-N-A-A. -A -A -A, and then all my other stuff is on there too. And I have a podcast called Sounds Like a Cult, which is linked in my Instagram. Go check it out. It's so it's really good. fun. I saw I you guys really live and it. I was so inspired. I, I, think I told love you that. that you, you know, you came to the show. That meant yeah. so much to me. Oh, I felt bad. I couldn't go to like your half hour. Oh, it's fine. Who gives a fuck? I care. <laughs> <laughs> um, please follow me on all the socials at the Fumiabe. That's T H E F U M I A B E. Uh, you can see my stand up and shit on there. That's also my Venmo if you want to support this podcast. 
I'm Stuffy Bake, um, and you can check out my Instagram at Baked Goods, B A I K E D G U D S. And you could send me or send us some money <laughs> on my Venmo. <laughs> Steffi is me. Uh, we want to hear about your spending habits and other financial buys that you're in. So if you want to reach out to us and let us know, go to uh, email us at cashcuties at gmail.com and we'll talk about it. On the podcast, um, cuties, I think that's it. We'll see you guys next week. And until then, spend your money wisely, please. Oh, anyway, wait, hold on. Also, did you do the send us a voice memo? Did no one is, has been doing it. Okay, you guys. Send, send them a voice memo. Send yeah. us a voice memo. <laughs> With the question so that we can actually replay it back on here so we don't have to read it out. Yeah. yeah. So be, make sure really to fun. send us That's, a voice memo. That was your idea, Issa. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Send them a voice memo. Yeah. Send it to us. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.